Forgiveness is the economy of the heart. Forgiveness saves the expense of anger, the cost of hatred, the waste of spirits. Prayer is not eloquence, but earnestness, not the definition of helplessness, but the feeling of it, not figures of speech, but earnestness of soul. He who cannot find time to consult his Bible will one day find he has time to be sick, he who has no time to pray must find time to die, he who can find no time to reflect is most likely to find time to sin, he who cannot find time for repentance will find an eternity in which repentance will be of no avail, he who cannot find time to work for others may find an eternity in which to suffer for himself. Repentance is not completed by a single act, it must be incorporated into our mind, till it become a fixed state, arising from a continual sense of our need of it. Sow an action, reap a habit. Genius without religion is only a lamp on the outer gate of a palace, it may serve to cast a gleam of light on those that are without, while the inhabitant sits in darkness. All desire the gifts of God, but they do not desire God. The ingenuity of self-deception is inexhaustible. No man ever repented of being a Christian on his deathbed. One kernel is felt in a hogshead, one drop of water helps to swell the ocean, a spark of fire helps to give light to the world. None are too small, too feeble, too poor to be of service. Think of this an act. We live in an age which must be amused, though genius, feeling, trust, and principle be the sacrifice. What ascends up in prayer descends to us again in blessings. It is like the rain which just now fell, and which had been drawn up from the ground in vapors to the clouds before it descended from them to the earth in that refreshing shower. The world does not require so much to be informed as to be reminded. Forgiveness saves the expense of anger. The misfortune is, that religious learning is too often rather considered as an act of the memory than of the heart and affections, as a dry duty, rather than a lively pleasure. Prayer is not eloquence but earnestness. We are apt to mistake our vocation by looking out of the way for occasions to exercise great and rare virtues, and by stepping over the ordinary ones that lie directly in the road before us. The soul on earth is an immortal guest, compelled to starve at an unreal feast, a spark, which upward tends by nature's force. A stream diverted from its parent source, a drop dissevered from the boundless sea, a moment, parted from eternity. A pilgrim panting for the rest to come, an exile, anxious for his native home. He who has once taken to drink can seldom be said to be guilty of one sin only. Did not God sometimes withhold in mercy what we ask, we should be ruined at our own request. It is not so important to know everything as to know the exact value of everything, to appreciate what we learn and to arrange what we know. All reformations seem formidable before they are attempted. The soul on earth is an immortal guest. That silence is one of the great arts of conversation is allowed by Cicero himself, who says, there is not only an art, but even an eloquence in it. We have employments assigned to us for every circumstance in life. When we are alone, we have our thoughts to watch, in the family, our tempers, and in company, our tongues. We are too ready to imagine that we are religious because we know something of religion. We appropriate to ourselves the pious sentiments we read, and we talk as if the thoughts of other men's heads were really the feelings of our own hearts. But piety has not its seat in the memory, but in the affections, for which however the memory is an excellent purveyor, though a bad substitute. Nothing raises the price of a blessing like its removal, whereas it was its continuance which should have taught us its value. 
There are three requisitions to the proper enjoyment of earthly blessings, a thankful reflection on the goodness of the giver, a deep sense of our unworthiness, a recollection of the uncertainty of long possessing them. The first would make us grateful, the second, humble, and the third, moderate. When thou hast truly thank the Lord for every blessing sent, but little time will then remain for murmur or lament. Our merciful Father has no pleasure in the sufferings of his children, he chastens them in love, he never inflicts a stroke he could safely spare, he inflicts it to purify as well as to punish, to caution as well as to cure, to improve as well as to chastise. If I wish to punish my enemy, I should make him hate somebody. Yes, thou art ever present, power divine, not circumscribed by time, nor fixed by space, confined to altars, nor to temples bound. In wealth, in want, in freedom, or in chains, in dungeons, or on thrones, the faithful find thee. When we read, we fancy we could be martyrs, when we come to act, we cannot bear a provoking word. Luxury. More perilous to youth than storms or quicksand, poverty, or chains. Sweet is the breath of praise when given by those whose own high merit claims the praise they give. I used to wonder why people should be so fond of the company of their physician, till I recollected that he is the only person with whom one dares to talk continually of oneself, without interruption, contradiction, or censure. I suppose that delightful immunity doubles their fees. How short is human life? The very breath which frames my words accelerates my death. Absence in love is like water upon fire, a little quickens, but much extinguishes it. A small unkindness is a great offense. Everything which relates to God is infinite. We must therefore, while we keep our hearts humble, keep our aims high. Our highest services are indeed but finite, imperfect. But as God is unlimited in goodness, he should have our unlimited love. Pride never sleeps. The principle at least is always awake. An intemperate man is sometimes sober, but a proud man is never humble. The sober comfort, all the peace which springs from the large aggregate of little things. How much it is to be regretted, that the British ladies should ever sit down contented to Polish, when they are able to reform, to entertain, when they might instruct, and to dazzle for an hour, when they are candidates for eternity. After all that corrupt poets, and more corrupt philosophers, have told us of the blandishments of pleasure, and of its tendency to soften the temper and humanize the affections, it is certain, that nothing hardens the heart like excessive and unbounded luxury, and he who refuses the fewest gratifications to his own voluptuousness, will generally be found the least susceptible of tenderness for the wants of others. Since trifles make the sum of human things, and half our misery from our foibles springs, the education of the present race of females is not very favorable to domestic happiness. For my own part, I call education, not that which smothers a woman with accomplishments, but that which tends to consolidate a firm and regular system of character, that which tends to form a friend, a companion, and a wife. Oh! The joy of young ideas painted on the mind, in the warm glowing colors fancy spreads on objects not yet known, when all is new, and all is lovely. In agony or danger, no nature is atheist. The mind that knows not what to fly to, flies to God. It may be in morals as it is in optics, the eye and the object may come too close to each other, to answer the end of vision. There are certain faults which press too near our self-love to be even perceptible to us. We contrive to make revenge itself look like religion. We call down thunder on many a head under pretense, that those on whom we invoke it are God's enemies, when perhaps we invoke it because they are ours. A 
Affliction is a sort of moral gymnasium in which the disciples of Christ are trained to robust exercise, hardy exertion, and severe conflict. Anger is the common refuge of insignificance. People who feel their character to be slight, hope to give it weight by inflation, but the blown bladder at its fullest distension is still empty. Sound economy is a sound understanding brought into action, it is calculation realized, it is the doctrine of proportion reduced to practice, it is foreseeing contingencies and providing against them. To hint at a fault does more mischief than speaking out, for whatever is left for the imagination to finish will not fail to be overdone. Life though a short, is a working day. Activity may lead to evil, but inactivity cannot be led to good. Affliction is the school in which great virtues are acquired, in which great characters are formed. We do not really know how to forgive until we know what it is to be forgiven. Therefore, we should be glad that we can be forgiven by others. It is our forgiveness of one another that makes the love of Jesus manifest in our lives, for in forgiving one another we act towards one another as he has acted towards us. Sensibility appears to me to be neither good nor evil in itself, but in its application. Under the influence of Christian principle, it makes saints and martyrs, ill-directed, or uncontrolled, it is a snare, and the source of every temptation, besides, as people cannot get it if it is not given them, to descant on it seems to me as idle as to recommend people to have black eyes or fair complexions. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.